Okay, back for question time, uh, part two. Um, so this week we've got a fair bit of content to get Went from through. two questions when I left home to 22 questions. Yeah, well, people have... Um, left it to the 12th hour. Exactly. They knew you were on the road. They didn't they want to were... give me any chance to possibly be ready for their and questions. And a number of these are directed at you, John. Yeah, it's so great. We'll, we'll, yeah, um, I love it. Off the cuff. Put you on the spot. Yeah. Uh, the first um, one is from a guy that... Uh, calls himself nice Say You Think, nice horse, so you think. and uh, they came through on um, YouTube and he said what's a large enough sample size of bets to be able to determine your edge? Well that's the first part of the question. I currently have 3,200 recorded bets yielding a profit of 4.15% on turnover over the last three seasons. So what are we talking Thousand about? Thousand bets a year. Roughly, yeah, yeah, exactly. I bet on predominantly Melbourne and Sydney Metro racing, but do bet on Adelaide, Brisbane and Perth carnivals too. Is this a large enough sample or is variant still playing a major role in my success? Okay, so... Two, two meetings a week. <clears throat> well, it's... It, so yeah, 20 it, bets it, a week. It, it, you're talking... I suppose what he's saying is... So he's having um, 10 bets per meeting, on average, uh, roughly. That's actually, that's, yeah, okay. Anyway. Just trying well, to he's, got a 3, uh, 30, he's got a 3,200, he's got a 3,200 sample size. Yeah. Um, he's wanting, I suppose, is is that enough to determine your edge? I would say statistically, yes. Um, that's, that's, that's satisfactory. Uh, is it subject to variance? Yes, like all sample sizes. But the bigger they get, obviously they converge closer to- Yeah, because in isolation, if you said that was betting every day, it's not a big sample size, but when you're talking only two to three meetings a week or whatever he's talking, or four meetings a week over three it's about, years. It's a thousand bets a year. So yeah. a thousand bets a year is, is, and there's another question sort of related to this, which we'll get into yep. after, but yep. um, I'm saying that if you've got an edge of 4.15% over the 3,200 bets, I'm saying, uh, I don't know what dividend you're using to record yeah, that. Yeah, that's obviously is, is the 4.15% a level stakes result or a proportional result? If it's a proportional result, I would say, yes, you've got an edge, mm. assuming that the dividend is realistic and, and whatnot. If you, yeah. just, if you just take so what, That's actually an interesting word. I'm going to add to it, and I don't know if there is another question. I was having, we've had a bit of a heated debate with other uh, one during the week of what, what's the, what would you use as the best formula as in result, dividend result to record. <clears throat> I think something like uh, we had an argument that it was like a bet fair SP as a purport and bet best hope SP sort of something in between using a, a percentage of both. Well, the bet fair SP will depend on your commission. We, yeah, well, and it's in, like I would never use it as a be all, and it's just yeah. so volatile. But it's interesting to throw in as a percentage, like a in, in the as a like what, what do you call it when you're um, you're doing things anyway. I'll think of the word. Look, but uh, I, I suppose the metric that you should be using is something that you can achieve on every bet. That's right. So the worse, sort of sum that the you more want. aggressive, the better for your uh, believability of your own of your own number. Well, even the paramutual. If, yes. If you just want to use a paramutual like a Vic or a New South Wales paramutual, first of all, you, you need. Yeah. To if you're betting through one fifteen or whatever, then you're, you're yeah, yeah you're going okay. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So so in terms yeah, of yeah so a hundred's not realistic because it's going to color your results. Yeah, and also you're going to have commission payable, so you need to build yeah, that in. So that's right. If, you, if you've got our software and you're using the Betting analyzer, you can actually factor all those things in automatically. You can set your commission rate, you can choose the dividend, you can I choose whatever you want to bet. I know you don't, but that, that's <laughs> only because I don't know how. Well, I've, you probably don't even know it's there. I'll I, show I, you. I don't bet. So, look, um, so you think, yes, I, I, I think that variance is probably. Yeah, I'd look not into it. Like that, that's the only thing I, I would be the same. I'd say you're. Querying the dividend? Yeah, that's it. That's the and, only thing you want to. Yeah, and the staking. If, you, if you're betting level stakes, yeah. I'm saying that a 4% pot. On that many bets, dangerous still, is dangerous and could still mean that you're a loser, a net loser. Yep. If it's proportional uh, or Kelly or some form of, form of proportional betting, then I would say that uh, you're, ready you're, you're, you're ready to rock and roll. Yeah. Um, you know, if you want more information on that, get in touch with me or John. No, get in touch with get in touch with me. Yeah. Uh, and we can talk about that if you mm. like. No problem. Next one is from uh, Mickey Gaines. Is it Gaines? Gaines. 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 Also like off. Yeah. Gains. Also off uh, uh, YouTube. YouTube. It mm. doesn't help the Hong Kong pools when there is only access from Australian and New Zealand customers, no punters or traders from other countries to help boost the turnover. So we're talking about Betfair SP or Betfair pools now on Hong Kong racing. Yes. Okay, and, that went, and that, I didn't know them. that. So that makes sense um, to me why they're a bit light on what everyone may have expected. Yeah. So 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 I, I think last week or the second meeting or whatever it was, was it, was it maybe 10% I read somewhere it might have been 10% up on the first 
Look, it, it might take a little time to... So they re- they fielded it again they, because I saw Hong Kong blew up. <clears throat> yeah, Hong Kong blew up and, and they just sent out a cease and desist and Betfair... Said, uh, we'll just keep playing. Yeah, whatever. It's still open for business. Okay. So... Interesting. What happens out of that, I don't know. Um, yeah. Really, I suppose, it doesn't help, you're right. Well, it's not going to help grow the... the uh, you, you're probably the not going to grow Hong Kong into a big product if you've only got Australian and New Zealand customers. 100%. Right? It might be acceptable. It might be similar to a... It'll fall in line to, to a, a metro, metro. Yep, yep. yep. That's, and, and look, that might be satisfactory, but you're not going to get that massive up. You're not going to get UK levels of turnover or, or no. better or whatever. Well, yeah, everyone <laughs> thinks Hong Kong, yeah, millions. It's not and the clubs, the clubs never going to agree. Not, no. Well, well yeah. I maybe think, not well, now, anyway. It's a dicey one, isn't it, when you've got those things, shadows in the background well, of the they? Hong Kong, what do they call yeah. Asian whatever exchanges, and it's all it's, a bit funny. So, yeah, who knows? Yeah. But if, they, but, uh, if they've taken a stand against it, then they've very rarely changed their mind, that's for sure. Yeah, so hopefully that, you know, your yeah. point. Your point it'll, it'll slowly grow. Um, there's no doubt, but yeah, yeah, it look, won't I ever get too crazy. I've started um, betting on the honkers this season mm. again. And uh, it was okay yesterday. It got it's interesting they say that one of their major object, uh, objections is that you can bet on a horse to lose. That was one of Hong Kong Jockey Club's well, that, that, major that, that objections. Well, the whole integrity, integrity. issue is, is a key. Yeah, I just don't understand that. Like, what's the difference between backing five horses, eight horses, ten horses to beat a horse and laying a horse? Well, that's, that's the view they've chosen. The I understand, but I just don't understand that as an integrity issue. I, um, Yeah, like, it makes no sense. So, so say as a jockey's agent before they changed the rules i was not allowed to lay a horse that josh and tim were on but in theory i could back every other horse in the race to beat them what's the difference but the, like yeah so i don't understand what, how lay betting is an integrity issue it's just a betting option it's just yeah, you know no, bet without i don't really understand that sort of thing but anyway okay next one's from mitch who uh, emailed these in um have a few questions first on betfair uh, he's, I think he's talking to me here. Yep, um, good. When you post the ratings, you rate them low average good. What factors go into how you rate them in these categories? Okay, so we're talking about the Betfair markets that I produce for Sunshine Coast on a Sunday. Oh, for Betfair, Betfair. yeah, yeah. Uh, I give the race rating uh, either a good average or low. It's a confidence rating. rating. Confidence. It, yep. It's essentially confidence. Yep. But the confidence is, is and is, I suppose, Mitch, this is part of the, the answer, Confidence in a race isn't always just about the form. It's also about the betting edge. So if I think yep. that if I think that the winner should definitely come from these two or three horses mm. um, and they're all massive unders, or at least at the time of writing. Yeah, you love the race, but you hate the I odds. Might, I might go, this is a low confidence race because I can't see that There's I'm, not, yeah, you, you think that, that I'm going the market's the identified the same edge yes, you've identified. exactly. So if I if I say rank the top three horses are rank one, two, three, and the market agrees, th- th- there's every chance yep. I'm not going to get an edge. Same and race, prices are same race, triple the odds. Different story. There isn't a high, yeah, there isn't a big enough confidence. You can and have. it also depends on the horses going in to make that up. So if they, you know, receive resumers, yeah, or first, oh yeah, or whatever, yeah, or yeah, first, whatever, there's a first query start. over a couple of them. Yeah, even money first start or something. If they suddenly become value, mm. that, that's also a problem because the market's saying, well, I, I'm saying I've got to query this. You don't horse. know if you're right still. Yeah, yeah. you don't. Know. I, I market yeah, three dollars. Yeah. yeah, the market's gone from two forty to five dollars on Betfair. Correct. Uh, I had a query over the horse to begin with. Yeah. So I'm still saying I'm wrong. So it, Well, yeah, there's every chance you're that's, right. That's right. So you don't know whether you're right is more the problem. So yeah. the factors that go into it are numerous. Um, it's not the only decision maker. It's it's pretty Yeah, hard. like the level of data like available in the right. Yeah, exactly. Like you're saying queries, that always clouds something. And then you want better value. Yeah. There's, yeah I know exactly. I do a similar thing. Um, so, it's, it, yeah, everyone does it differently. But yeah. I, I hope that that's, that's good. That it's, and it's important to provide something like that because... A horse that's three dollars, <laughs> just providing three dollars as a price, isn't realistic. Um, there's, it, it's, it's over time, it, you know. Well, whatever, look, I mean, it's, it's like my prices on the weekend at Rose Hill. Like at my highway prices, I would say that that was a low confidence race because I didn't like the race. Mm. Um, nothing stood out. Uh, I was very keen in Shock Alert's race. Um, Era Kanji, sort of an average confidence. Um, but they say you've got something like three dollars. 
Well, Bevel you might there. chime into two dollars eighty that horse if things line up. If I, but you you're not, there's another three dollar chance you might not chime into ten dollars about That's if right. there's query. That's so, right. yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. So you know the the Bevelwack race and the Arcadia Queen race were really high confidence from my point yeah, of view. Yeah, exactly. So anyway, uh, what's the longest losing run you've had this year without a single winner? So if you're talking number of, or longest losing sequence, is um, this I, in your Betfair ratings or is this in you personally? I don't know. By the way. I don't know. Well, the Betfair... Well, it says you're we actually, in your career, so actually, there you go. We actually keep, yeah, we're actually keeping um, records on all that Betfair stuff, and so is Betfair, and they're posting that on the page, so yep. you can see that. So this is a personal question. Um, so personal question. Um, if you're talking longest losing sequence, look, I haven't thought about it, to be honest. Um, it's not something you really want to dwell upon, is it? Well, yeah, you're talking question. number of bets. So, yeah, you know, yeah. Is it 20 without... Look, I can tell you that... I suppose historically there's been many, many times where I may not have backed a winner in 20 bets. Yes. It's happened. It's yes. happened several times. Uh, longest I've experienced in my betting career, uh, same sort of thing. I, I Especially prefer, if you're backing multiple runners a race or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, probably not normally doing that that often, but still. I it's mean, easy to get. It's easy for yeah, weird things to happen. In think, of it as, think of it as heads or tails. I mean, if we... We know that the implied probability is 0.5 on both. Hmm. You can still have 10 heads in a row or 10 tails in a row or whatever it might be. Yeah. And so it's very easy to go for... I'm, I prefer to, to think of it in terms of drawdown, and that's your next part of your question. Yes. How many times a year do you have large drawdowns and that make you question your approach? Well, the drawdown part, I would say, you know, I might... I'd say most of the time, punters are in a drawdown period, meaning that your current bank... You're very rarely on a yeah. upward yeah, well, no, no, constant you're, you're, spiral. You're, your current bank is somewhere below your highest point. That's so, right, yeah, so you're very, you're, no one's like that. No, no well, one's like that. You might be like, yeah. You yeah. might be that 5% of the time. Yes. You know, at a yes. point where you feel like you're winning because you not only have hit a new high, you've hit a new high on the new high, that sort of thing. Yes, so, yes, yes. So most of the time you're going to feel like you're behind your highest point. And you've got to get used to that feeling. Yeah, and you and it's how you manage that. And that um, stops you questioning your approach as much. The, yeah. the longer you're in the game, the less you're going to question that approach because you understand that... If you've got enough back data yes. and you've got enough records and you can see and you can go back and visit those drawdown periods and see that you perform poorly mm. um, for whatever reason, um, I can tell you now when you do bounce back, you, you, you tend to bounce back pretty hard, pretty fast. So mm. you can recover a lot of that that drawdown um, that occurs. So, but in terms of percentage, I mean, I'll, I'll be direct and say that I'd say once a year I would have a drawdown where it might eat somewhere between 35 and 50% or 55% of my bank. So it's pretty yep. severe. Yep. And that might happen actually twice in a year. Yep. Um, so it does happen. Do I question my approach? I think everyone does. Well, you have to. You, have but to. you don't question your approach yeah. because you're in a drawdown period as, as much as you've always got to be questioning yeah, your you've approach. You've got to be exactly. evolving. You've you got to be evolving. Yeah. So, so I would spend, and look, I go away on holidays at Christmas time and most of January, and I come back the last two weeks of January, and I use that time to um, refine the coefficients that go into my process. I do the same. Um, you know, look at what the market's doing better or worse. Uh, and and look, I think most punters need to do take some form of approach in that regard. And that's an interesting because I don't. Um, I, don't like, I do it on the fly. Like I don't take time. It's, it's actually I, I wish I you could. You keep records. I do, but I wish I kept. I wish I did to like what you're like taking a, a specific period off to analyze things more. I, I, there's no doubt that I could improve everything that I do, and I don't do it. Yeah, you know it's, what I mean? it's, it's, it's an like interesting a, way to do it. Refresh or well, you a, can't a do everything and add on. It's too hard, you know. Yeah. Like, and so it's it's well, it's very hard. It's not impossible, but it's very hard. And if you're more chance of being clear minded if you make that the the only task at hand than if you're um, you're trying to add it on top of, <clears> of whatever else is happening at the time. So. Indeed. No, it's a good idea. And Mitch, your last part of your question, do you have a limit on what would halt your current strategy and readjust, i.e. lost 50% of your bank? How do you start the adjustment process to find out what's gone wrong? Okay, so many times in my betting career, I've, I've lost my bank uh, completely. Mm. I think any good punter has been in a situation where they've knocked off their bank many, mm. many times. Yep. And uh, it's a slow learning process, but it's a it, it's a it's it's a necessity if you're going to make a living at it. So as far as mm. I I actually bet the the structure of betting that I employ is such that I expect that the drawdown that I'm going to have could be as high as sixty percent of my bank. So yeah. I actually 
I actually go out there with the intent and bet to the method that creates that reality. It's aggressive. It's like. Yeah. It's it, well. It's it, it's not really that aggressive, but well, it's I more mean, aggressive than it, someone who bets like one percent or something tops, and then it's very hard to get. To, 60 no, I'm saying drawdown. Draw well, it's not hard. It's, it's no, really if you're betting to, if you're only betting a maximum of say one percent output oh, of your bank or something, it's well, very that's hard to get. Stakes. Yeah, that's right. Well, your drawdowns are actually going to be bigger on level stakes, mathematically. It's hard to get to sixty percent though. Right. If you're not, I'm like I know some if, if they're adjusting it after each bet. You know what I'm saying? Oh, Back in 60 loses in a row or something is hard. Okay, so but I've got $100, yeah. I've lost a dollar. Yeah, now it's 99, so I'm having $9.90 on the next, yes, you know, okay, yeah, 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 whatever it progressively, is. Progressively, yeah. Yeah, 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 okay, yeah. fair enough. No, um, that's it, I know a lot of people, like, that, that, like that's a very um, look, relaxed. I'm always looking at things. I'm always looking at um, different ideas and, and testing different ideas hmm. uh, across back data, as well as what I call holdout data. Um, on mm. future races, but essentially that the, the majority of that analysis occurs in January over that two week period where I've pretty much we're, myself okay, up. No, I'm the opposite of you in this respect where I want to, I don't, I'm a bit more brazen with staking and these sort of things. So, but I, what I want to know is that I've had a good bet. So if I went on reviewing meetings, is there something I overlooked? Is there, is oh, there, yeah. that, well, that I, means more to me. Every horse that you, wins yes. or does something that I didn't expect it to, why? Well, I, I, did I miss I, something? Yes, I always go back and as yeah. part of my review process. So that's more important to me yes. than... Absolutely, that's a good point. Well, it's been important to you as well, but that's how I kind of review performance yeah. more than monetary-wise. Why, why did that happen? Yeah, and that's, again, I could improve on the monetary-wise, but I want to... <laughs> yeah, what, I'm, what I've done, the bet I've had, was it a good bet? Yeah. It means more. A couple of good there, questions there, Mitch. Okay, Andrew on Twitter. Um, oh, he's through. a lunatic. I know this bloke. You know this guy? Yeah. How many bets are you likely to have a week or weekly over average 12 months? How did you decide on betting? To we okay, well, let's deal with each one of these questions at a time. How many bets do I have over a week or weekly? Look, I probably average somewhere around 30... 30 bets. 30 bets, maybe 30, yeah. 30, 30 bets. A week? Yeah, that's it. Okay. That's not a lot. It's not a lot. No, it's not. No, um, I'd be about the same. I, 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 Tops. Yeah, like I'm targeting mm. specific scenarios, so that's that's the answer. Whereas someone else might have a hundred bets a week, someone else might have five. I mean, yeah, a lot of people bet every race everywhere. Like they think yeah. they get a small, like it's just turnover. Look, there are plenty turnover, of, turnover, plenty turnover, of turnover. teams. Yeah, that would bet in most races because they've yes. got the, the resources. Model. Yeah, and they've got a model, and they feel like. Um, I mean, mind you, I do have a, a small model now on the on the lay side of betting, which I'm running, um, which is almost every race. Yes, um, but only for small money. So yes, uh, to see how it performs. But that's so, kind of what what what. Yeah. So yeah, you're right. So, there's different strategies. There's like, different strategies. I sort of target right. one at one an edge before we get into it, whereas others are happy just to churn, churn, yeah. churn, churn, churn. Exactly. How did you decide on betting to win as a stake strategy? Okay. So years ago, when I was um, growing up as a young lad and betting, uh, I used to love each way betting. Mm. It was traditionally, you know, quarter, quarter of the odds. Yep. Um, that obviously is no longer available. Now, uh, I'll tell you what's interesting, just talking about that weirdly, just to sidetrack, <laughs> corporates, place betting, sports bet these ones bet, and then you go, like, in the tab and top spot, there's like, like one might be a dollar eighty, the other's two dollars four. The discrepancy in place betting in corporates yeah, is quite different, incredible. At it's different consistent. stages in the market. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. quite incredible, the difference, in, and obviously it's what they can get away with with their clientels and things like yeah. that. Well, it's a bad way to put and it. How much, yeah, and, yeah, and who you can get on with and stuff. It's, it's quite weird. Exactly. But place betting is so much different to, to what it was in the Look, past. Uh, I'd say 97 or 98% of my bets are, are win only. Win only, yeah. And occasionally I'll, I'll stake the place under certain circumstances. But to get back to your question, so I went from that sort of each way punter targeting shorter priced horses in the market and backing them each way. Yes. The so horses that fit the profile. So I used to love taking. You know, two to one, six to four. Yeah, yeah each, each way. way. It was just, yeah. it was just an absolute picnic. Yes. Um, but that, that's gone. So yes. then, in the early two thousands to mid two thousands, and, and even as late as probably oh nine, I was betting. Most of my betting was through quaddies, mm. and so I had a software where I would put um, a lot of combinations through every combination staked individually in accordance with you know what i thought was the perceived value so you know in a, in a race i might put through 1500 or 2000 combinations and yes. in another uh, race meeting i might put through two or three hundred combinations mm -hmm. so quaddies were very good um <clears throat> that's all gone the teams have 
pretty much. Well, the teams and the corporates have bastardized yeah, the whole thing. Yeah, exactly. So they've, so taken, they've eaten all the money that you want to try yeah. to eat. So my, my, my quantity yeah. that I would price at 50s um, and used to get regularly maybe 80s, yeah. I'm now getting 50s. Correct. And so the people winning are winning off the rebate. So yep. it's almost a lost lost call. So win mm. strategy's easy. Um, uh. it, it keeps me focused and that's just what I prefer to do. Mm -hmm. uh, do you ever pay to fine if you see warning signs <clears throat> for another runner, i.e. money late for blue collars? Look, I do. There are certain circumstances where if I've had a bet, I pay to so fine. So when he says pay the fine, he's talking about, say, chopping trading out on a horse and a whatever it is. Yep, yeah. Yep. Okay, so if I back a horse... First up runners are interesting because if I like a first up runner, um, well, let's let's talk, talk about Arcadia Queen for instance. Yep. So I like I like this runner. I'm going to have a large bet on it, and I have that large bet, and then the market starts to go against the me. other way. Yep. And I will often in that situation um, have a coronary. Pay to fine. Yes. yes. You cannot keep betting on those first up horses that are blowing in the Especially market. Especially from those sort of stages. That, yeah. that are trading at a premium on the fair as well. Yes. <laughs> Another situation is I've got a horse, it goes into the gates, it plays mm. up in the gates, it rears, has to be backed out and vetted. Mm. Instant, I'm off. Yes. I don't care. I'm and you've got to draw a line in that respect <clears throat> where you do that every time or you every don't time. do it at all. Every time. Yep. You can't just do it sometimes. No, or you could even, a lot of, some people might go the other way. They might get a premium that horse and say, well, I'm going to top up on that horse because yeah. normally the market reacts a little bit well you've yeah, got to but you've got to go one way or the other you've either I, I know from my own records and and it might just be but you know what i'm saying so it goes from glasses. 250 to three dollars because yep. of that yep so you either probably have something more on it at the three to increase your yeah, odds or, get out. or totally get out yeah, being what what i would say would definitely be wrong is just sitting on the the odds that you've already got yeah. Yeah, I'll yep. trade out. Yep. So that's what I do. Look, um, the last time I didn't do that, mm. and I don't know why I didn't do it, um, and I did actually top up, and it was one of the most stupid things I've ever done on the punt. I like it, yeah. Uh, was the Oaks, when the horse, I'll think of the name of it. Not Portelli's? Uh, no. The, the Yankee? No? No, it came out. It came out, they were reshoeing it and, and whatnot. It was one of the short price favourites in the Oaks. Like two, I know the horse two or you're talking three about. or four years Not ago. Aloysia. It starts with a, 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 Aloysia. Yeah, yeah. Aloysia. That's yeah. it. For whatever reason, I had a brain betting. snap and I kept betting. And, and Gaze just kept running. And I just. And never was seen again. Gaze. That was it. Was it? Yeah. Okay. I can't remember the name of it. But anyway, so the, the point is that, look, when I say I always do it, I always do it. But for whatever reason that I day, didn't I didn't do it. Do it. Um, I love pain stories. They yeah, can, a little pain story, and I, and I learnt yeah. a lesson, and uh, and I and I've pretty much always done it. Well, I have always done it since. Mm. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you might trade out of all bar a few hundred dollars, or depending on the price, you're not going to mm. just put a stupid you know, stupid price on it. You're not going to lay it at tens if you backed it at four. I'll share a pain there. story. Yeah. I had five thousand on Maldivian at a hundreds in the Caulfield Cup. Traded out, took me forever talking in favours, everything, so that it was worth. It was a good result, no matter what. And that's when he went up head butted. So I didn't even get a well, chance I, to I trade had, out. I had that. That's what. That's all he had to do was jump. He didn't even jump. That's the race that cured me for um, futures betting. Futures betting. Yeah. I, I had ten thousand with sporting bet, the Michael Sullivan sporting bet on the Tuesday. Doesn't it exciting to talk and about was, having five thousand or something at a hundreds? Like, imagine trying to do that now. That was just well, with no, the tap chipping away or I whatever. Think I, I think I took. I think I took something like. Oh, the, yeah, this was like three months out or something, four. two months no, out. No, okay, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm thinking, oh, this is an absolute Yeah, he was moral. six to four, hard. Um, yeah. And uh, when rider. that happened, and I didn't get paid, of course. Yeah, I was on the floor. I remember it was some club in Sydney watching it in the tab there, and I was like, I just was shaking on the floor for about an hour after the race. It was very, it was good. It was good. Anyway, the, maximum that, pain. That, I love it. Maximum pain. Okay, <laughs> so, so Andrew, um, I hope we've answered those questions there for you. Yep. Next one's from Josh, also on Twitter. This oh, one's addressed God, to John. Yeah. I've got to um, be careful here. Or either of you, but I mean, yeah. what he liked about thinking Well, I could have big. given you a script because then you can talk about it and I can't get in trouble. I, anyway, can't, I can't see what he saw, suggesting it would measure right so up. So he's, he's a subscriber to things, and I, like, and I wrote a message on Twitter after saying, well, I wasn't his favourite. And, you know, it was a little bit of a blow up for me because I couldn't back the horse and yep. it frustrated me that I couldn't back the horse. But I couldn't also see why the horse wasn't well supported regardless of how it finished in the race. I, I'm, I'm saying it started $11.70 on the tote. I'm not sure. I think it was $15 odd bet fair SP. I think it SP'd about $11. So 
What, right. what surprised me was this horse was drawn to dominate the race. Yep. It was a horse that profiled from Gay Waterhouse. It had won a maiden first up, which is okay. It was strong yep. through the line. That's okay. Yep. But it's a horse that was always going to be there. Her horse is always have that progression. You could see where it's targeted towards. Uh, anyone could see that, regardless of what I knew or not mm -hmm. knew. Mm -hmm. This is a horse that was stepping up in distance naturally. It was going to be in the spot that was most advantageous in the race. There was horses in the race that were first up, uh, Shadow Hero, <coughs> Castelvecchio, <coughs> that mapped to be out the back. They were not worried about a listed race. Rega like they were just, this was not their grand final, whereas yeah. it was more important to just thinking. And regardless, he was gonna be in the spot anyway. It didn't matter, there was no other way the race could be run that it wasn't yep. gonna be in a good position. And the horses chasing it weren't the most talented horses or, and there was nothing with a setup. And Castelvecchio didn't have the setup and it was gonna be chasing He him might have won. And could on class a lot, but he, he was always going to be, yeah, he was 1,500 first up and he was chasing a horse of gay waterhouses yeah. that was superior fitness wise, in a much better position set up wise. It was going to be in a much better controlling position in the race. And how could it be seven or eight dollars to twelve dollars? It made absolutely no sense to me. And I'm not saying it should, like I marked it five to two, but I was aggressive. <clears throat> I'm saying why didn't it start five or six dollars? You know, like, and, and how could it possibly start longer than a, a true detective. So you're, you're, you're doing the process of elimination. I well, to me, this was more about setup of the race than the horse. I'm not saying this is the most talented horse in the race, yeah. and it probably surprised me how good it went compared to others. So you, so, so I'm Castor saying setup-wise alone and race setup and track the way the the, the six metre rail. Yeah. How was it soft in the bed? That was what I didn't understand. Like, I, even if it got beat, Look, I, I expected it to start six or seven. I, I originally well, assessed that, you, it I think you answer the question more yeah. because that's what you would you would be along the lines of a lot more that the people who actually set the final markets mm -hmm. are thinking than, than someone like me who puts a more personal, like going through, they're not going to make adjustments to say, well, okay, Castelvecchio is probably having a, not practice, but it's not going to risk destroying its preparation from a wide draw by pushing forward or racing outside its comfort zone. Whereas, uh, you know, a bigger team's going to just profile it on ratings and things like that. So they, they're not going to be as aggressive in a race like this as I could be yeah. because I'm applying a personal spin on every runner in the race. And I understand that, like, to market favourite, you had to do that, 100%. There's no way you could mark this horse $3.50 on what it had done. But this race in particular, it just had everything, every box ticked to be a, uh, in the finish of this race regardless of whether it was the best horse in the race or not. It just had too much on them from a fitness perspective and where it was going to race in the run yep. to be $12. And the pattern, and we saw... And the pattern, and you had a pattern before that. Stage that oh, I was just amazed that it didn't start well well found in the market, whether it won or not, and uh, and, and, like, and after the ball... Well, we know now why. It was just purely figures. Well, it was, it was and, that, that, and strong, that's what I'm the saying. The teams would have, would have backed it in. Yeah, and, it, and it'll start shorter next start in a race that's probably harder. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, because it's won this yeah. race. And that, that, that I think, I'm not saying that was it's Christmas because it's the sort yeah. of horse that's progressive, but it looked like it's Christmas on paper to me. And that was what frustrated me that I couldn't understand why it didn't start shorter in the market, regardless of where it finished in the race. There you go, Josh. That's a good answer from mm. John. Uh, Luke has asked, can John explain what he does now that he can't bet on jockeys he manages and into the races his jockeys are in, he cannot even bet? Mm. Is that the same thing? Hang on, can, uh, he cannot bet on his jockeys, be ma uh, he manages, be manages, and into races his jockeys are yeah, being okay, so yeah, yeah, one yeah. question. So what do you do, John? So you, you've talked about Well, it. two things, like, well, there's, there's also, there's two parts that I can't bet, and I can't provide information uh, to anyone uh, for monetary... Uh, reward. Reward. So it affects me in a few ways. Can you, do, Obviously it, can can't you bet. do it for food stamps? Well, I can't. I can give you some vouchers. Is that monetary reward? I don't know. So it's frustrating for me, obviously, because one, I like to bet. Um, <laughs> Two, I like to provide, well I do, I've been providing for 100 years on these sort of races. So it's 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 handicapping me, what do I do? I get angry and it's toast almost, after the race, why look, is this not favourite? It's almost a restraint of trade. Yeah, then regardless, in any, in any regardless, I don't want to get into that into that side of things. It, it is, it's difficult. It's, the answer is it's difficult. What do I do? I'm not allowed to bet, so I don't bet. I don't provide information to people that I've been providing information to for 11 years. I've had to stop it, you know, so I can't, that's what I do. I just sit there and watch it and get right. frustrated. So there's... Certain times, so Luke, like, yeah, yeah well, it's, it, that's all it is to me. It's, Luke it's goes on to say, in his opinion, what a joke this rule is, uh, but what's he do now because I... C Believe he could make more, more from the, the punt than punt most punt. other things. So, yeah. to me, I've got uh, Josh and Tim, are the only two jockeys I've got left. 
Uh, to me, they're more of uh, a family than they are of uh, a work opportunity, and I enjoy doing what I do with them. And to me, even though monetary-wise it may be handicapping, it, it's it's my decision to stick with them rather than yeah. do what I do. And and in saying that, uh, like the stewards have made a decision, it is what it is. You know it what is. I mean? And and, and I'm playing now the game that they're setting the rules for, and I understand that. All right. Well, that's the answer to that one. We'll move on here. I'll just continue to whinge. Indeed. Anthony, a good client of mine, uh, how do you respond, gents, when you've created a market for a race, but it just doesn't look or feel accurate? That's a good question. Yeah, so, okay. so, Anthony, I'm, I'm, one example is similar to what we just spoke about. Yep. I produce a market for a race, and I go, well, there's a bunch of queries here. This one's a fitness query, this one's a map query, this is something else. Yes. And I'll come up with a market, and I go, well, I've got that horse, that price, but I'm, I think it... I, I don't feel comfortable having it that short or that long. Um, I, I have this horse, this price, and I've got queries over it because of map, fitness, whatever. Um, so it's either short or long. Well, basically, when I end up in a it's situation a where race. it's a low confidence race, and I almost mm. toss it, and I don't bet in it. That's how I, I, I get. It. Yeah, there, there's there's horses that you don't. You just know. For me, like is we polar opposites, but again, you feel uncomfortable. I'll, I'll, I'll sort of set a market for a race and it's just a horse I never want to find, but it just looks like today's its day, but it's still not a horse that you want to, you want to take. Yeah. So it's just, a, literally, it's just to find the next race job for me. It's, it's, um, yeah, it's, you, you really want a premium on those sorts of horses and when you're you don't get betting them, on you're those, scared yeah. of them. Yeah. And, and, you know, uh, <clears throat> like for me, I don't mind putting horses to market, like in that Castelvecchio yes. race, I've said to myself, okay, Bet easier top dressing. It's easy on the fair. Yes. It's out the seven dollars. Mm. I want to make this seven or eight dollars to see what else. I now can is get there on. a yeah? Now is there an edge? So I so I ended yeah. up with that brought in the others. Yes. I, I ended up backing True Detective. I don't know why, but I did. Well, I did. Because yeah, because well, yeah, that's and, right. And I, and I saved and I saved on just thinking. So um, it wasn't it too bad. Well. But yeah. but yeah, there are some races where. I don't mind putting one or two. But if you're just thinking six dollars, <throat> which like you know what I mean, if, if oh, the I'm market found it, you're not on it. That's I'm right. Yeah. So yeah, but that's it. Yeah, it's a so funny. I was, bit, I was a bit lucky. So yeah, yeah. But that's that's that yeah. that makes sense. Like it's it's an easy, like a, uh, how to treat a first up horse, and again consistency. Like if you treat it that way all the time, it's going to yeah. It's it's just more about how and you we're all going to be right a percentage of the time, and, and you, no one's going to be right all the time. Exactly. You know the, what I back. The horses I find, John doesn't, and yeah. he finds them, and I don't. And, yeah. You know, th that's what happens. Next part of your question was, um, how do you incorporate what you see with your eyes, like powerful fruit line or a stylish win, into your markets if the ratings or the data doesn't support what you've seen? So I'll let John speak what he thinks. Well, this is back to the old my grounding of the <coughs> syndicate days, where it's they call it um, special uh, quality. Well, you know, it's, a, it's it's the data has to. Be, it's all about be, uh, the data supporting what yes. your eyes show. Yes, so, yes. so you're obviously trained to watch things, and something can look flashy, but uh, data doesn't support it. So, I'm trying to think of a horse that, say, you say God of Thunder last start looked really impressive to the eye, big margins, come down the outside, put them away. It was just a fair race. Like it wasn't bad, it wasn't good, but it was neutral. It's come out odds on this time, and you're sort of skeptical about it because of that. So. If it had a power, if it had done the same thing, it looked great to the eye, but its times weren't super exciting. If it well, the time supported it, I would have been far more inquisitive of it yeah, next yeah. start and when yeah. it was on. So it's it, it, it's definitely a hand in hand, and that's where I n use data the most is to back up what my eye sees because I think I've got an edge in what I can see in trials and finishes and checks and things, and, and like I've trained myself up enough to have that edge over most people. But I do need the data to support it, to um, to back it up. So whether and and can go both ways. A horse that's stylish to the eye with poor data is just as powerful as one that has the data to back it up. So yes. you know, and it, it provides an edge going forward. Correct, because well. it's overplayed yeah. by the majority of people. A stylish mm -hmm. win, uh, and if the data's poor behind it, yep. that, that's just as powerful going very forward. Very yeah, very so good. it goes both ways. It's just one supports the other, and if you can train. Both well, things. I, I, I'm, you got access to I'm good data. Answer, yeah. yeah, I'm going to answer the same as John. Yeah. Essentially, for me, it, it probably also 
comes back to the rating because the rating for me is the actual number that expresses the horse's performance yeah. as a whole. Yeah, we're including um, margins, everything. Yeah, 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 yep. yeah margins and, and what yeah, and buys, everything on the day. Yeah, yep. everything yep. on the day. But essentially, yeah, you're looking for the times and the sectionals to show you or to confirm to prove, yeah, what, to yep. prove yep. what you think you're seeing. Yes, or, or you're using it as a base of interpretation. So when I look at a race, uh, the video for a race. First thing I do is I look at the times and sections and I say to myself, what am I expecting to see mm. before I even look at it? And then, and if I see what I expect to see, well, I go, okay, well, there's nothing, no surprise here. Yes. If, if, a, if a horse does something that it shouldn't have been able to do, then obviously that's a... Query horse a and query you're now looking at it, yeah. You're now looking at that race yeah. for, for other reasons. Yeah. But yeah, you're looking for reasons to either oppose or like horses from a race going forward, knowing that if a horse is going to be overplayed, that that's going to create yeah. an opportunity on others. And there can be good runs in poor races, yeah. poor runs in good, good races. races. <clears throat> Everything's, yeah, it's not what it seems all the time. No. So, yeah, you've got to really interrogate visually and then yep. back it up. And that's it. so it's definitely one, you can't do one without the other. I don't care how good you are. Okay, so last one is, um, and Holy thanks crap. for that, Anthony. Last one's a bit of a, um, I spoke to Tom the other day. He's a client of ours, and uh, you've, you've stitched us up here, haven't you, Tom? You've given us a nice... Is this a two-parter, or is this... Yeah, no, it's sort of like, yeah, well, it's, it's part of it. Oh, he is, Tom, that's, that's who it is. Yeah, okay. it's part of it, yep, right. yep, yep. Okay, so Paul and John, um, if this is too late for today, leave till next. Well, we probably could have made a video just on this. But yeah, anyway, bloody hell. Um, I'd like to get your thoughts, your, 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 sorry, your, your thoughts on horses... First up with no trial. I find pricing them difficult. Personally, do you allocate a price, set them to market, or a roll under or over market, first of all? Okay. For me, very quickly, I, I rate the horse based off what I know it can do, what I'm expecting it to do, and I look at that price and I say, okay, I'm very confident in that horse's first up price today, and I can't market any shorter. Uh, or I can't, sorry, I can't market any longer. So if I'm getting value for the horse, I'm happy to bet. If I market that price and I'm saying that I, I, I couldn't get it any shorter and it blows, well, then I'm more inclined to put it to market like, like Castelvecchio. Um, but now we're talking about trials. So I don't know, John, I mean, this is such a, an in-depth thing. There's a, quite a well, few parts. Yeah, and I think, <clears throat> geez, it's hard to attack them all. So um, no trial yep. as opposed to trial. Is obviously very different. Big, a lot of horses that don't trial thing. have trialed. You're yeah. just not aware of it, yeah, whether they've jumped out or whatever. There's very few horses that show up to the races <laughs> out of a paddock or out of straight out of the stable. So that's a factor. So trainer's a big factor, right? Now we're talking? Yeah, trainer will wear it, yeah, exactly. And for me, uh, the most important thing is the distance that it's, well, the, the setup of the race, obviously, mm -hmm. that horse's profile and the distance of the race. So say a horse is one over 1,200 metres yep. maximum, that's yep. it, and it's 1,200 metres today and it's not trialled, I'm very worried about that horse. Yeah, if it's 1,100 or if the horse is a miler coming back to 1,200 and yeah, and it fits into, you know, like it, it looks like it's in going to be in a nice spot or the, tra the race suits it. I'm going to take it really seriously uh, first up, but if it's yeah, if it's at it, if it has to perform to its maximum in that race, whether it be distance or ability, I'm very sceptical over how it's going to run that day, and I'll be very aggressive against it. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, makes sense. So it's, it's more about the horse's profile. Yeah, profile of the horse, profile of the trainer, the stable. Yes. A whole lot of things coming. Yeah, yeah, like yes, yeah. so, and I'm being a bit active on Twitter lately about Gerald Ryan. He's he's very good at getting them ready fresh and I think you backed it up with some statistics there yeah. and a couple of ones since then you know there are definitely patents and it's irrelevant to whether they've trialed or not or how they trialed these horses are relatively ready to go from certain stables compared to others you know of course of course yeah, yeah. so, so what Tom says is in the past he's priced them off previous prep ratings yeah horses first up performance both ratings and the market trainer first up performance versus market yeah, so jockey and gate, that and plus all yeah. the normal things Suitability Suitability of yeah, so well, well, that's I, exactly I think that said. that's all what you've got to do. And I don't care whether the horse is trialled or not. I mean, yes, with trials, you, you, I like to look at the horse's current trials, uh, the its previous trials from a previous preparation to see if the horse is, you know, at a similar spot, yeah. similar spot mm. same sort of headgear. Mm. You know, all those things come into it. Um, but at the end of the day, first up horses are often 
the hardest horses to assess. Yeah, and, and in, you know, like even if you go one step further, even owners, like there was a horse in on Saturday called Angel of Heaven. <laughs> yep. Nash Rilla rode it. Nash went to the provincials trial twice. It got beat eight lengths twice, and Ron Wanless owns it. Prolific betting stable. <clears throat> yep. The horse is coming back from group ones. It profiles it's at a 1500 first up. So the only thing it had against it, obviously, was the six metre rail that was going to get back. Yep. But it just looked like a smelly horse. And if there was money started to come for it, you would have begged, borrowed, and steal to get a hold of it. Like it was a 10 or $11 chance. If it started, it's a <clears throat> horse that if it started $6, yep. you'd be far more confident to back it if it started $16. So it, it's, um, it can go either. You can, you can go into it as hard as you want. So um, as yeah. deep as you want. So he's talked about how he's backed a few of these horses lately that have drifted significantly yes. and ran poorly, and he's trying to develop some logical thinking around how to attack these. Things. I would say that's really um, important with the stable. Like, say, Gerald's horses often get through to the keeper. They're yeah. not all off the mat, whereas a horse is like a uh, Chris Waller horse or whatever, it, a market's far more... Uh, important to to how it's going over like the indicator of how, how firm they are usually tells you how well that horse will run fresh whereas yeah that stable like or a, a snowden if they're if they're ready to go because they don't normally tend to trial them uh too flashy you know what i mean they don't give themselves up in the trials yeah uh, softer trials softer trials like you get dolphins yep um the betting tells you a lot more with those horses than a stable that may sh show a bit of intent in trials or the opposite may try and hide them they're just they're pretty consistent, just let them go through their paces and you don't really learn a lot. So the betting's gonna tell you more uh, late than what the yeah, will with other states. So some thoughts that Tom's had in regards to all of this is that the first point he made was, he's, uh, he's saying, I'm unlikely to know more about how this horse is going in the market. This goes against it being a betting proposition for me. If someone close to the horse knows it's going very well, they're likely to take the value price before me. And if it's not backed, then I probably don't want to be with it. That's probably not a bad point. Mm -hmm. The way I, I tend to handle it is this. In the Castelvecchio situation, uh, well, that's probably a different situation. Well, but, it had trials, but, but irrelevant. But, yeah, but for most, yeah, for, most, for most of these first up horses, if I think that the rated price is X and the market um, doesn't support the horse the way I expect and the price doesn't um, come towards my market, mm. then I tend to put them to market. Uh, but then if I'm going to be having a good bet in the race, I might say to myself, well, I don't want to lose if this horse wins. So I might just save on it or half save or do something along that. See, that would have been, if I was betting in that race on Saturday, the race we're talking about, the Castle Vecchio, yep. uh, again, I was a bit more aggressive. So, but I, so I want to back just thinking. That's that, but clearly, yeah. I want to, I don't want Castlebeck to beat me at, at seven dollars. I yes, don't want it to so you be. You want to save on it, hundred percent. Yeah. So, so whilst you may not be having your normal bet, if you are betting in those races, then sometimes these horses, I'm just telling you, how well, they have to have a but, quality that you think is it can overcome whatever's against it. Ronnie yeah. Duffy made a great point on TV. You know, yeah. here's this horse at seven dollars or six dollars or six fifty yeah. or whatever it was at the time. Yeah, you know, I can't let this horse go around at that price and, and no. beat me, which no. is what we're saying. Yeah, I think, and what you're saying. Yeah. So the second one is, is you've made here is early markets might keep these horses safe in betting due to unknowns, but it's uh, about how it's going. To some extent, the price throughout the betting is anchored to this early price. Absolutely. The late market, and I'm talking the last two minutes, yep. is critical. With Everything's first exposed. Yep. Everything gets exposed because we're running out of time. Our aces need to be played. Mm. We can't bring them back tomorrow, so we now have to bet. That's it. And that's when you see these these massive moves or swings sometimes yes. occur oh, massive. Yeah. in the exchange market. So I think you're on the right track there. The third one was first up horses that haven't trialled are less likely to be fit than the first up horses that have trialled, so should be treated as such. Well, we've talked about the jump outs. Some of these horses have had jump outs. We wouldn't know. But if you're talking trials, I think John also very was few races go to the race uh, horses go to the races without yeah. something, something a jump out or two or a trial. But even the trial, so let's let's take a twelve hundred meter race first yes. up, and we've had a couple of those seven forty trials. Mm. I hate those. Yeah, of course they're not you fitness know, building runs. They're, they're, they're just not, they're, no, they're unless you see one of Gay's jammed out wins by eight or something. That's that's the only time you ever see a horse. You go, oh, well, it's going to be ready in a twelve hundred. And the you can also see patterns from previous trials. So in our form, as as you would know, mm. Tom, um, we list all the trials as a, as like another run. There's no separate report to go to or whatnot. So you can see the patterns of trials leading into those first up runs. So you might see, let's say yes. we see a, a couple of preparations where it's 
seven at one eight hundred or whatever. Yeah, yeah or whatever. and now it's gone. And twelve, and now suddenly we see a thousand. Yeah, nine hundred and a thousand or something. With, yeah, with a key jockey. Yeah, and, and there's more intent in the trial. Something's changed. That, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, you something's expect changed. something. You're to expecting change. something yeah. to change. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's definitely an art form in itself, first up horses and trials. He said, I'm not talking about horses that are likely to have big target races in the spring, but your opinion on these would be interesting too. I'm more talking about your standard metro provincial country type. Overall, I've come to the thought that I should avoid backing them at this stage without looking at more specific data. I ran a Twitter poll and 56 of the 82 votes were to lay horses first up no trial with, the other info, with no other info provided. I would prefer to be contrarian to a Twitter poll, but I just can't justify any logical reasons. I like his thinking of being contrarian to a Twitter yeah. poll. That's very interesting. Other than fading a Twitter poll to be on the backside at the moment. Mm. And uh, he's just showing his figures there. Most mm. 68% came through as layers mm. uh, in, that, in that poll. So look, overall, first up horse is very hard to assess. Um, it's an onion, isn't it? it There's many bit, layers. It's a bit of an onion. Look, I mean, I, had, I normally have a, a reduced bet on first yep. up horses, yeah. Uh, Say for the the mayor Arcadia Queen on Saturday. Um, yeah. So like an argument like that Zatori race where you run second the other day, it was of horse first up, but it had mile form twelve hundred and had plenty in its favour where you know there weren't too many strong horses in the race, drew the right spot. So you're looking for a premium on things in the race to suit it to want to back it first up, but it only had a quiet jump out, yep. hadn't had a trial, but it had a quiet jump out, and its profile for me um, overcame the query of it being first up. And then it was backed, I think, from 8.50 to $5, which also helped your confidence, you know? So it had a lot of ticks in boxes to want to back that horse first up on Saturday, but there, that's the kind of thing you want. Uh, and that was yeah. probably a really good example because it profiled well and it was supported in the market. Which one are we talking about now? Zutori, the one where you were horse yeah, yeah, yeah. And for me, the Arcadia Queen was all about the fact that this horse had just kept going to another level. Well, it had won over, what, 2,000 metres as well? So it was 1,300 fresh, yeah. whatever it was. It had won by at least at over a mile. Yeah. So it had it had that in its... Enormous in its, turn of yeah. I thought she was the best filly at the time in Australia. Yeah, through the gate. Outside Winks. Yep. Um, drew the gate. They're going to ride it more forward. Mm. Jockey, um, everything you want. Like, yeah, we'll every, sort of every, everything pointed to it. I know the connections in terms of the way they like to run their horses I'll put it that way yeah and this horse it's just not a horse that he's going to play with too, at yeah. the set weights and penalties even so I had you know at, at her figures of what she can run I had as I said, yeah so I, if I had, you've got it fours on without adjusting it and you've adjusted to twos two on that's pretty aggressive to be say that oh, I, I might have been wrong at fours on but twos on is you know if I'm wrong there something's wrong you yeah, know yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so so if it started two to one you start having a heart attack but oh, if it, once well, it was firm in the betting well yeah you're willing to take a risk I, I, I emailed I emailed a good friend Mark Lamborn and asked him the best prices in the ring yeah at the time and he came back 215 and then I um, said okay yeah well, let's go. go yeah um and and fortunately it was also found well, it's all, yeah it's a horse that ways. they want to they want to um a book it, he wants to lay it had, yeah it had gone up in rating in in bucket loads almost every start mm. and, it, and it's gone out at, on an absolute peak yeah so there's all these are all ticks these, so these, these are, are all premiums ticks. that you want to all overcome premiums. the query of first up and that's exactly. kind of the secret so this is obviously a very good horse you know but in a race but it can happen in the country a, a, you know a promising horse whatever it is if it, it if has it, to if have it went the premium. other way on the fair and, and the market I, I would have been in a world of pain yeah. because i wouldn't I, I wouldn't have been able to trade out that position no yeah no. i would have loved it if you were in pain well, you do. I like pain. You do like pain. Mm. So, look, that's all the questions this week. Um, been a big uh, couple of uh, parts. Yep. Um, Lismore Cup this week. I'll be there with the Rant Boys. and I won't be there. John won't be there. I'll be and in the Newcastle Cup on Friday. Newcastle? Okay, there you go. Yeah. And uh, we'll be back next week. Head spins we've got in there. What are we not in the Newcastle you, you Cup? You've got golf on awesome. next week or anything? Yeah. No, I'll be back from Newcastle. I'll be there Friday, Saturday, and then I should be back Monday, yeah. but, you know. Okay, we'll work that happen. out. Um, thanks for your time this week. Cheers. Cheers.